Chapter 37 What was life like in the 60s? Where do I start? To me, the 60s were the greatest years ever. I graduated high school and had my first car. Then I played in a great band and played the greatest music ever. I had two brand new Ford Mustangs and one of the greatest muscle cars, a Pontiac GTO. I met Marilyn Kuhn and got married. Then I had this most wonderful baby girl. Who could ask for anything better than that? The 60s started out with me having an appreciation for the music of my parents' generation, the crooners and big bands. When I saw Elvis on television, it hooked me on the latest craze, rock and roll. When I was in high school, I was into the latest music, which was the surfing sound of the Ventures and the Beach Boys. This is the sound that I loved, and it came to us by AM radio from Chicago on WLS, and it was what we played on the jukeboxes in our hangouts. Speaking of hangouts, if you have ever seen the movie American Graffiti, then you have seen my world. They really nailed it with that movie. We hung out at drive-in diners and soda shops. We went to drive-in movies and there were three that we had in town. There was a particular crowd that I hung out with. We all had three things on our minds, souped up cars, rock and roll music, and girls. This is not in any particular order because it always was changing. The routine was to cruise the streets at night, from one end of town to the other, through one drive-in diner to another, showing off our cars and who we might pick up to ride along. The coolest guys were the ones with the most souped up cars. If your car was at the top of the heap, it was the one that jumped and lunged and jerked as it idled past the cars, parked in the lot with the curb service trays hanging on the doors. This erratic action of the car was a sign that you had modified the motor with a high performance cam and more carburetors to get max horsepower. And sometimes we had bypassed the mufflers to get max noise too. When someone felt he had to prove that his car was better than yours, then they challenged you to a race. The word got around very quickly about a race happening, and a caravan drove off to a spot out of town where the two racers could line up side by side. Whoever got from a dead stop to a spot down the road first, about a quarter to a half mile, they got to boast for days about winning. Yes, my 55 Chevy was souped up with a bigger motor, a high lift cam, and two carburetors. This to the dismay of my parents. I also put in a four-speed stick shift and loud exhaust. I raced a few times around town, and I also took it to the drag strip in Terre Haute. I got a trophy for first place. By 1964, the music was changing. The Beatles had made it to the US. It wasn't long before it was the entire British invasion with groups known as the Rolling Stones, the Animals, the Who, and Herman's Hermits. This really knocked the Beach Boys and Elvis off the top of the charts. I already was playing guitar in a band by the mid 60s but now everyone wanted to learn how to play guitar and get into a band. The music stores were selling so many guitars that they could hardly get them in fast enough. It was a music revolution. There were many places to go hear local rock and roll bands. Every club had teen dances and also the YMCA and YWCA. When my band, The Villagers, were not playing, we went to hear other bands. After a while, all the young musicians knew each other, and that got to be my new crowd of friends. By the late 60s, I was a married man with a daughter and living in my in-law's nice house on Denmark Road. This started to be the most popular hangout for the other musicians and groupies in town. We had many jam sessions in the lower level of the house, which was perfect for the occasion. I don't know how Michelle could sleep through all the loud music down below. The music was taking on a change, 
The villagers and some of the other bands were moving toward the soul music of James Brown and Wilson Pickett and adding horns. We were being influenced by groups like Chicago and Blood, Sweat and Tears. The psychedelic groups were coming on too, but really didn't make a big impact on our crowd. The decade ended with the biggest event in rock and roll ever, Woodstock. When I think about what was going on at that time, the things that come to mind are the Vietnam War and the love and peace movement. Of course, these two things are closely related. Many of my friends were affected by the draft. They either enlisted or were drafted. I did know many that went to war and a few did not survive. There was also the drug scene. There were several in our crowd trying various things, but I never saw anyone abusing drugs. Some were smokers, but for me, I was not brought up this way. The love and peace movement had its presence, but more on the campuses than in our town. I think Marilyn was engaged in this more than me. I dressed in bell bottoms and flowered shirts, but that's about the extent of it for me. All in all, I look back and say, I loved every minute of it. What a great time to be a young adult.